Good morning from the Supreme Court of New Orleans. I'm about to do a little shopping trip. I have found what is an absolutely amazing, amazing antique store. Um, and it's called Antique Guns and Swords. And they have some of the coolest items I have ever seen. Coins back to the 1500s. Muskets, old rifles. Oh man, Justinian II. A gold solidus. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask about these things. Let's go inside. Whoops. After you. <laughs> no worries. And I was already in here, and uh, one of the employees said that he would uh, have time to help us. So uh, here we go, Harold. I'm Barry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So uh, I see you have stuff from all over the world here. Yes, we do. Is there a, any item that's uh, particularly rare or interesting, or uh, I'm a whole store full of it? What about the French muskets from 1822? 1822. So that that is a French musket. Now that. Most likely would not have been used in the Civil War. Could we not take it down or is it only... Grab my ladder. You know me, I try to be as difficult as customer as possible. But man, what a... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Do these things still fire? So it's in working order. If you pull the hammer back, it does. It you know it would fire in theory. It's black powder. You needed a percussion cap to to fire the piece. You had to have a lead ball and, and pack it. How long so, to reload this thing? How what was the so process the like? So the manual stated they were supposed to load and fire. Oh, welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were supposed to load and fire three times a minute. Three so, times a minute. Three times a minute. So basically. The idea was you would pour your powder, drop the ball, pack it all down into the air. Then, <laughs> then you pull this back and you stick a cap right here. Without the cap, it doesn't fire. And then once the you, once you pull the, the trigger, it hits the caps, the little primer, lights the powder, sends the ball out. And this, 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 this round circular ball, they look nothing like a bullet now, no, not right? Yeah. Okay. Very different. They and were solid lead. Three times a minute. Three, that's what they were, that was what they stated. What I can tell you, if you're standing there taking turns shooting at one another, three times a minute is a long time. <laughs> They actually, some of these, and this one's not working properly, you had a you had a safety built in, and this one doesn't do a good job of it, but there, when you pulled the hammer back, there was what they call half cock. So the phrase going off half cocked actually refers to this because you would load it halfway to, you would pull the hammer back halfway to load, and sometimes when you did that, it would go off while you were loading it. I see, I see. So yeah, but this is a French. What was the range on this? How far could you fire with this one? Um, fire accurately, not very far. I mean, it would fire a great distance, but these were not accurate muskets. They're what they call smooth bore. So this is it. it there's not a rifling going on inside the barrel to put spin on the ball. So it really, you could aim anywhere, and it's going to go where it wants to go. Later on in the Civil War, rifling started really taking, and they started creating more rifling, and then things were more accurate. But in the 1820s, accuracy was not was not high on the list. So would you, uh, what did they used to call it? They'd all line up, wouldn't they? There'd be like yeah. a row of 10 people right. with these, yes. and just like fire a wall of, of yeah. bullets, would, yeah. and so something would hopefully hit. You would have officers in the back playing chess, and they'd move these people over here to move to create reaction and then use all strategy um, and then I don't have one for it but they after they fired you would have a bayonet that they would fix to the end and then they would charge and stab and, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite item here? Um, all right, so I like sort of the unusual. Um, one thing I like, I like the Civil War era amputation kit. Wow. Right yeah. So it's an amputation <laughs> kit. Hold on, let's have a look. <laughs> so this one was used to amputate. Amputate. Yeah, during the war. Um, from my understanding, of course, I'm not a doctor. Uh, the instruments are roughly the same as saw as a saw and a knife as a knife, but different materials, different anesthesia. But that's just neat to think that. In, in what you, what's neat about antiquities is you put yourself back in time and try to envision what life was like. And so if you were in battle and you got shot, infection was probably as dangerous as anything else. So amputation happened a lot. Probably without anesthesia? Like, we're, we're, what we consider anesthesia today. And so it, it could be just putting a piece of wood in your mouth and your buddy's holding you down, or whiskey, or any other type of anesthesia you can come up with, just to, not, to dull the pain. And amputations happen for in that reason. And so I think it's kind of neat to see the tools of, of, of the trade, I guess. So what's this one going for? Um, I think that one's around sixty-five hundred dollars. What did I say the price was? Sixty-five. It's actually fifty-three hundred. Fifty-three hundred. Okay. <laughs> I was mistaken. All right. Can you imagine how much pain and suffering. Now it is um, missing one piece. There is a piece right here that's missing. We always point out everything that's wrong with it as well as... Whatever it was, it looks like some kind of torture instrument. <laughs> so... <laughs> Is it American or...? Uh, yeah, so the company was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh. So it saved a lot of lives, obviously, but it's also... You know, <laughs> when it comes to antiques, I never, I never know... I, I never come up with a story. I always tell my customers... I'm going to show you everything that I can, and any provenance I have, you'll see. Yeah. Once you get it home, you can come up with whatever story you want. Yeah. Oh, man. Just be real careful because they, yeah, they're they, still, they still cut. They still <laughs> cut? Yeah. You have old American coins? I do have old American coins, yes. Oh. But they're not. America is a young country. <laughs> Compared to the rest of the world. Yeah, I mean, this coin. So we're talking, what, the 500s here? Any idea of the journey that this coin took from... No idea. From Constantinople yeah. to... Uh... No idea. Okay. Just in... What is, is it... Um... What is it made of? It's gold. It's gold? Yes. Wow. This is unbelievable. What's the coolest thing you've seen in here? Do you want to have a look at? I like the uh, 12-shot revolver. The 12-shot revolver. Oh, you Americans, always <laughs> the guns are your favorite thing in the world. <laughs> what you have? Um... Hold on. We have. Oh, here we go. This one. Mm -hmm. so this is French. And I'm going to show you. I've never seen one. I don't before. like to point guns at people, but <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It's neat to see. Yeah. Please. Absolutely. I'm more it. Here you have the lead bullets, do you? Yeah. Could we have a look at that one? Yeah. Now we're talking. And now, now we get to see the, the actual bullets, what they looked like back in the day. Yeah. There you go. Oh, by that. It's heavy. Like it's way heavier than I... Than I uh, feel this. Feel how heavy it is. Mm -hmm. So this is a set of two... Two guns, mm -hmm. they come together, right? Correct. And how much would this be? So this set here, 5,500. 5,500. You've got the powder flask, which is made out of corn. So that's nice. the powder flask. So you would have had your black powder in here pouring down the barrel. This is your bullet mold, so the bullets would have been made by pouring lead through here. The technology has advanced so much. Can I lift one up? Absolutely. Or is it? Yeah, of course. I'm worried about breaking things. 
You don't have to worry. You break it, you bought it. That's it. I wow. like that these pieces survived uh, in the 1800s. Hopefully, they can survive. So before this, was a single shot pistol. Mm -hmm. And during the Civil War, all the manufacturers are trying to find more ways to fire more accurately, faster. Mm -hmm. And so they came up with this. You know, they came up with revolvers and percussion cap and. Yeah. And that's the cold army, yeah. yeah. There's that famous saying that I know of um, of Colt, I think. What was it? God made man and Samuel Colt made him equal? Mm -hmm. That's it. God created man and Samuel Colt <laughs> made us equal. What's this little bag? caliber. This is really good condition. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? The other thing when you're buying pieces like this mm -hmm. is one at the small details. The matching serial numbers. Okay. So when you're buying pieces like this, you always want to have matching serial numbers. And then you look at something like this right here. Oh, so you can put it in the you can put it in the That's your 44 caliber. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that, that's important. You also so want to make sure yeah. this is <laughs> okay. the yeah. right thing we're back. Where you always look at your single was this the one with the bayonet? Yeah. Where it's is hiding it? from you. Oh, it's hiding. Now it's there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in person. You want to try that? <laughs> if, it, if it breaks, I want to break it. <laughs> So the, I mean, the idea with a bayonet on a rifle was that that's kind of you are bullets, you have a you have a weapon. I've never seen that on a gun before. Okay, you lock. I heard the, Yeah, still works. So this is with the lock. Yes. Um, and it was a pin fire cartridge, which meant your firing pin was actually in the cartridge, not the gun. They stopped making the shells because they were very unreliable and dangerous. But um, yes, yeah, so you your firing pin would actually pop up in these holes in the camera. Oh, yeah. You can see it, it's loaded, right? So how much is that? Uh, fair question. Forty-six hundred. So this this one says Confederate States of America, yes. twenty dollars. Could we have a look so, at that? So during was this part of the Confederacy? What New Orleans? Yeah. Yes, it was. It actually was. This city fell back to the Union pretty quickly. Um, I think. If, my theory because of its proximity to the Gulf of Mexico and the Mississippi, Mississippi River. But they issued their own currency. Yes, so the Confederate States did issue their own currency. Alexander Stevens? Stevens, yes. Why, so, vice President of Confederacy? Well, no, oh. he was the Vice President, he was vice president of the United States. Okay. Um, but why is he on then the... Because they also bad bills with George Washington on them. So, the Confederate States, they were the Confederate States of America, so they were still claiming a U.S. history. Um, and so, you know, they... Just wanted to secede and have... Okay. Um, so, at the end of the Civil War, you, you had put everything you had in Confederate currency. You're broke. Because the U.S. is obviously not going to be good on Confederate notes. And so a lot of so a lot of people save the notes, and some people threw them away, and now because of that, they become collectible. Wow. Yeah, it's got nice artwork on it. Well, that's what's really neat about currency, not just Confederate currency, but U.S. currency from that time period. But you have to remember, when they made these notes, they engraved the images into plates by hand. They didn't have computers. They didn't have lasers. It was all done by hand. So that artwork you're seeing was hand engraved into a plate. And that to me is what makes makes it more enjoyable to collect currency. Because if you think about the artistry that went into it, it becomes really unique. Yeah, this one's beautiful. I love the motive here. Actually, I think we'll get this one with the ship. It's a cool little artifact to give away. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, this one's cool. Yeah. I'll come here, we have more coins. A silver denarius. 
Oh, here comes beer. I know you're trying to get back <laughs> to your own stuff. <laughs> it's the oldest coin I've seen in here, I think. Which one? From uh, the Seleucid Kingdom, the Kingdom of Alexander the Great. The top one, the Tetra Drachma. It's really easy to get. You got coins older than that? Oh, you have a Carthaginian uh, coin. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How, can we have a look at that one? Uh, yeah. 50 years, I think. That is incredible. From Carthage. Before Rome burnt it, I presume. Oh. Yeah. Here you can see Athena. Is it zooming in? Mm -hmm. That is Athena. I no, think that's king. Alexander. It's no? King Antiochus the yeah. Eighth. Um, so Alexander the Great's kingdom after he. he built it, it fell apart, and uh, it was one of the rulers of the, the, the states it dissolved into. Making a purchase. This is for for uh, one of these members, and uh, I am getting the uh, the gold coin for myself. Justinian II, um, nephew of uh, Justinian the Great, to build Hagia Sophia and uh, reconquer Italy for the Byzantine Empire. One of the problems with vlogging, you know, once I turn off the camera, we keep chatting, all this awesome information I know you guys would appreciate um, comes up in top of the conversation. So this is a family run shop. You are the? I'm the fifth generation. And you had a picture of your? My great great grandfather. His name was William Feldman. He was originally from Hungary. And he actually lived on the third floor here and worked down here. So he started the shop in? 1898. Wow. You kept it in family hands all these Still years. The same family, yes. That is so cool. <laughs> huh. Any idea how he? So he came from. He came in through Scranton, Pennsylvania, and at the time, New Orleans was a big city in, in the U.S. And he made his way down to New Orleans. He actually got to start fixing feather beds, and eventually built it into multiple antique stores. He had, he had a, a handful of kids, and so my great grandmother was one of his descendants and she inherited this building and my grandfather worked for him and my great-grandfather who was his son-in-law worked for my great-great-grandfather I worked for my grandfather <laughs> and now I work with my father and my own that is awesome yeah, it's, wow, it's a, so it's a cool. blessing and a curse working with family <laughs> all right all right <laughs> well thank you so much for, the, for the journey and, and all the help and and uh, good luck. Safe travels. I hope, hope some of you guys come here and, and, uh, and help them out too. So now we're signing off. Here we are, the old Absinthe House. 1807. First uh, drink of the evening. This is the last evening. So let's, uh, let's see. Push is, you know, you will pick the weakest one. It's 106 proof. Everything else is already. You're drink shaming me. <laughs> you should be shamed. Can a Can a Northman choose whatever drink he wants in peace? No, you gotta drink the, the, the hard stuff. We had the green one yesterday, but they have the red one also. Yeah, that works with all the wind. <laughs> it's burning, all right. So why do you light them on fire? What does that do? Um, it just dissolves the sugar and it's also just for, for a show, for the presentation. Well, it's working. It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just water, is it? Yep. Too. So the absinthe is in there? Yeah. yeah. You excited? Yeah. Right. So this one is called Red, mm -hmm. after Noodles' favorite artist, Sexy Red. 
<laughs> Cheers. We are because the lady said she's going to stay. But are we going to stay here? I like it, yeah. Smooth. All right. Dig into my Federalis arbols and pay for this. Let's see. I have a go. 40, 47. The bar? It's the same price as the bar in yesterday. I think it was 20 or 25. I think the other one was 30. 30 each. So this is like a little bit cheaper. All right. Bottom song. So, what's your favorite sexy read song? Free My Baby Daddy. Really? Yes. <laughs> What's your second favorite? Downtown. Downtown. Wow. <laughs> Noodles, he knows all the hits. <laughs> uh, vodka sodas in an absinthe bar. Blasphemous. Everyone should be having absinthe. Okay. So it turns out we were in uh, the wrong section of the bar. It's inside here. It's much cooler. Look at this. They have an old absinthe tower from the 1800s. Do you think this would work, or you just... Um, yes. So, we did have it hooked up for a while. The hookups are turned off because uh, the problem we were running into was that, uh, well, Mardi Gras just passed and people were getting a bit rowdy and kind of finagling with them. Messing with the antique. Yeah, so we just didn't want them to get damaged. But the ladies on top have two different poses. We want to get both of them. Who is supposed to be? The... Uh, who are they? Oh, Artemis. Yeah. So, um, Artemis. Yes. This so, sounds uh, Greek and ancient. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Artemis is the goddess of childbirth. Wormwood has been used for like forever in women's medicine. It's really good at soothing your tummy and cramps and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, absinthe actually started uh, two sisters in Switzerland making medicine for other ladies and. Uh, yeah, that's why the... What? Uh, so it was a, a lady's drink to begin with? Uh, originally it was, and then Mr. Pernod, they taught Mr. Pernod how to do it. He moved to France and started the first commercial distillery, and he got the French he got the French military into it. Ooh. So um, wow. for the longest time, we actually thought Mr. Pernod had started absinthe, but now we're pretty sure it was the Henoa sisters like okay. showed him how to do it. Um, but cool. yeah, because wormwood has always been has always been used in women's medicine. Um, the botanical name for it is uh, Artemis is Absentia Artemisia. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you see a lot of Artemis on anything with a lot of wormwood in it. All right. Thank you so much for the history okay. lesson. She's the expert. I mean, obviously, I know nothing. Uh, I think my viewers will appreciate the history lesson. Thank you so much. That is so cool. And who was this? If, I will. I'll tag you. Um, and if, if you guys are on Bourbon Street and you want to try the absinthe, this is the best lounge I've seen. Um, so this one's Bella Pops. We're the speakeasy in the back of Old Absent House. And we're open Thursday through Sunday, 6 to midnight or later. Awesome. And the noise level is, as you can hear, you can actually talk to people in here, as opposed to out there. Yeah, this is where you want to come uh, and drink absinthe in, in style. If you... Uh, if you're of aristocratic means and heritage, like myself, you know, this is where you should, should roll. Hey, I'm the one who picked this part. Hey! <laughs> my idea. I'm, edit I'm editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. The drink empty yet? Cheers. What is this? What is this? What do you mean? How long does it take you to finish one drink? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cultured Northman. I enjoy my liquor. But no, it's been two hours, I man. Just chug it. That may take three. That's how good it is. I like to sit. <laughs> you it. baby your drinks. You you're baby supposed your, to. You're you, supposed to eat your food slowly. You baby your drink food. your drink fast. No, that's not. You got it backwards, oh. my friend. Oh look, we have another one coming. Ooh. So what's this one? This one's the Violet Crown Emerald. And was that your favorite that you recommend so much? Uh, no, the one that I recommended was the um, one that you said you've tried before, the Butterfly. That's a okay. Swiss. So this is going to be a green absinthe um, distilled in Texas. I'm getting the golden whatever this is. Oh, you can the take the silver. <laughs> 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 
in Europe, I don't think we do proof, so I didn't understand what proof means. But you explained. So if it's 130 proof, yeah, it's basically 65 percent. Was yes. that it? So you take that proof number, you divide it by two, that tells you the percentage of alcohol. So this would be like a normal drink. No. Yeah, it'd be like a normal high proof whiskey drink. All right. Um, the equivalent to it. Awesome. Um, Filtered with a golden spoon. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just um, diluting that um, absinthe with sugar and water. So if you try, if you try to just shoot it, it would be too strong, basically. It would be too strong, um, and you wouldn't get any of the herbal or aromatic flavors expressed. So we do this process because it's just like when a bartender slaps mint, you get all of those oils and aromatic properties expressed. So it goes from a translucent, um, clearish green color to a cloudy green color. So I'm going to give you a little sampler along with this so you can see what it tastes or what it tastes like before we do this process. And then you'll see that it's much more palatable after you dripped the water. And with water. sugar, for sure. Yeah. And I think that the whole thing is from the bottom. The butterfly one. Your cool spoon. Yeah. See, it's the shape of a butterfly. Yeah. Or a green fairy, whatever they call them. <laughs> so if you see the color comparison from before and after, it yeah. goes from that clear color to this um, milky cloudy color. So if you wanted to taste it both before and after, you can really see the differences and why you... I was just about to talk off and then say that if anyone was going to drink it straight, it'd have to be me because you're not man enough for that. <laughs> but then you actually put me on the spot. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have to... You want to try it? You go first and I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it packs a punch. You want to try it? <laughs> I mean, it's not outrageous, but it is. It is strong. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's see the okay, the finished product, the way it should be drank. Let's go. By the way, he's still going to finish his first drink. Hey, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying all this drinking pressure. He's drink shaming me. Oh. Cock rides and games at the yep. saddle bar. Yeah. Where is it? A bright yellow sign straight down on the left. Oh, wow. What they, kind of drinks do you have there? They got all kind of drinks. All right. You Should we check it out? Well, yeah, yeah, I want to. Are you in? Okay. We're on our way to the bathroom first, so, but, uh, okay. Afterwards, we go to the cock bar. Okay? No, it's okay. Come see. Come see, sir. Here. See the bright yellow sign there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the left. That's the cock bar? Yep. Okay. Should we check it out? One beer? No, no. Let's go to the... Okay, then we go into the cock bar. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, called Saddle Bar. They got, a, they, they, they got a mechanical rooster in there. All right. That'd be cool. You want to ride the mechanical rooster? No, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll ride it then. Cheers, man. Oh, yeah. 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 Your employee of the month. Your employee of the month. Aren't you happy? He just she she recognizes uh, an uncouth individual when she sees one. <laughs> Did she bite you earlier? Hey, she's been nothing but nice to me. She didn't bite me. All I see is her attacking you. I don't see her taking me. Look at Employee of the Month guarding the ATM machine. <laughs> try to pet her. I, I bet you you, you try you her. try to pet her. <clears throat> see? Hey, good girl. We're all friends, right? See, she's worried about you, not me. Because animals, they can sense bad person. 
<laughs> right? She's very interested in taking a swipe at the camera. That's so funny. Danger, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good girl. See, she does not like you. What are you talking about? She likes me, doesn't like you. Yeah. Then why did she just take a swipe at your hand? She did not. I saw it. <laughs> that's why I brought the camera up. Lies. <laughs> Lies. This is so funny. She's so skeptical with that. Look at that. <laughs> Lies. Good girl. Yeah. Try to pet her underneath, right her neck. Don't tell me how to pet a cat. <laughs> I've had more cats than you've had steak dinners. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> bye bye. The next stop is a bar we have been to before. Do you remember the name? Vampire Alley. Where? Vampire Bar. They will serve you your um, your drinks in a very, very interesting, peculiar way. It will arrive mm -hmm. in a, like an IV drip. And it, what do you call those things? That, that blood pack. A blood pack. Yes. And uh, it's a busy, busy place. So we're going early. Why am I crouching down? Noodles, you're so short. So I'm like leaning <laughs> over to hey, try and like hey. have you in the frame. Or maybe I can hold the camera like this. Okay, we're both in it. <laughs> okay, just a new angle filming with you. New angle? Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're going there to avoid the cues. <laughs> yeah. But how tall are you? I think I'm like 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, five, Short? <laughs> Doesn't look like that on the camera, man. <laughs> I don't know why you're talking tough about your height like this. <laughs> Everyone can see your 4'2". Four 4'2". Two, four two. Or something like that thereabouts. <laughs> All right, let's go. What, so you got their photo? Oh, yeah. Wow. So two vampires just ran by us. I was trying to clean my, 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 my lens, and now you're, you're telling me I missed them. Tell me your number. And Do you have the photo? We can show them here. I'll... Oh, my God, we took a lot of... You have a lot of... Oh, there we go. That's the two vampires. Yeah. They, oh, wait. they didn't try to attack you, did they? They did not, but you, <laughs> take it again, you didn't get Vampire Cafe. Okay, I got cafe it, Vampire yet. Cafe. Okay, so we're at the right place. Yeah. Okay, we'll go inside, we we'll see if we can find them. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Have fun. We will. Noodles, here we are at the Vampire Cafe. And uh, is it a queue today? No. No? Here's their menu. Blood bags, Dracula burgers, lamb stew. All right. Hey. Can we sit at the bar? Yeah, these ladies are about ready to take off, so you okay. guys could go ahead and just migrate over there, and then once they all get up, you can take their seats. We're happy to wait as well. Okay, yeah. You can just wait there. We I mean, they're like getting up right now. Okay. You muscle your way over there, and we'll yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Here. Can we muscle in on your seats? You are have at it. Thank you. I'm, don't, I'm not buying the drinks for no, you. No, no, no. That's so. Didn't expect you to. <laughs> Unless you're offering. <laughs> uh, wow, they're playing placebo. Put that there. Yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes. I don't know. I was just wondering why she would say that. Here's the thing about noodles. He has a special blood type. He's very protective of it. Um, so what's the deal with your blood type? A plus. All right. And it's plus plus. And that's some kind of coveted blood amongst vampires. Apparently, it tastes good. Mosquitoes and who told any, you it tastes good? Any blood suckers love me. You know this. We've been in the middle of a jungle without any uh, box spray. We're sitting like side by side. And they'll attack you, that is true. You never got bit when you were Mosquitoes with me. Mosquitoes love noodles, that is true. So I gotta be careful. So what's your, what's your specialty here? The specialty cocktails are all right here. So the drinks that are listed by a blood type on this side are gonna come in a normal cocktail glass. Okay. Ah, that's great. We'll take two of those. To start. To start. 
the Vampire Cafe. Use your thumb, and release it, and this comes out and you uh, stuff it in Not bad. I think it's A minus. <laughs> you like the other one better? A minus, my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is sweet. You have a podcast or something? YouTube. for the night so let's choose one of these bars here right should we get something to go and walk around no I want to go up there look we can sit up there right under the, the US Marine flag or whatever that is or, or we can have a hand grenade drink hand grenades and beer all right let's go Either way. I don't think they can hear you back there. Oh. Ah. It's the strongest drink on Bourbon Street. It's the strongest drink. Well, I'm not so. I'm not sure my friend here can handle the strongest drink on Bourbon Street. Yeah. Um, hold on. Wow, you have. I have it, yeah, I have it on the rocks. They're frozen. Then I got fire. You have fireball. Uh, I got fireball. Can we have two fireballs? Also, Jaeger, and then I have beer, and beer and draft beer. I think we'll settle for two fireballs. Yes. It's the cheapest fireball shop you'll ever have. Yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, we have got to have them here on premises. Why are we getting only two? We can't. No, but I want to drink on premises. You know, this is a fun place. So it's a lively place. It looks like this is probably the smallest bar I have seen in New Orleans. This is your bar. No, it's not my bar. It's my little spot. Oh, okay. So you're not renting this, and is it part of a different bar? Is it part of the one next door? Uh, same company, Honky Tonk Chocolate. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm taking the biggest one. I'm not sure you can handle fireball like I can. So, cheers. Bye. You got the fireballs. Mm -hmm. Woo. Look at him, already bad mouthing the greatest drink in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is the greatest drink in the world. Yeah, but you said it was the strongest drink. The strongest. I'm afraid that if we try that, my friend's gonna pass out. That'd be fine now. Well, no, it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> He's talking about himself. It'll not be fun for me because I want to have a friend. I'll be all alone. Yeah. I, I'll I don't be know. Here. I'll I'll be here so okay, in that case, maybe I'll come back here alone. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Man, what a cool place. Noodles. Yeah. I wouldn't mind you passing out that right now, and I'll, I'll go back there and hang out with a fireball lady. <laughs> I don't like you could handle the fireball lady. What? Uh, see, the can't, more he drinks, the, the more crap he talks. The more he slanders me, trying to bring me down, drag my channel down. I think it's about time we we maybe we part ways. Anyway, this may, may be the end of the video. It may be the end of our friendship. You may never see noodles again. I may never see noodles again. Signing off. <laughs>
to the cock bar. All right. Up down. Left. You sure you can handle the cock? What? I said, are you sure you can handle the cock? It's pretty big. We'll see. Oh, they're up, yeah? Yeah, of course they're up. Okay. Remember at the absent bar. After you? <laughs> oh, noodles! Wow, nice catch! Amateur, but it's broken. Here's the one that's not broken. In case you want to ride it, wouldn't be the first time you, uh, you ride a cock, would it? <laughs> Actually, you will be. I don't know about you, but you know. Uh, oh, man. Wow, noodles! Cock rides. Cock rides. This, this sounds your like favorite. This sounds like your I kind of you thing. I beat you to it. I beat you to it. All right, let's let's race to the cock, okay? Yeah, let's, on let's, it, guys. All right. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. Cock rides upstairs. Upstairs? Yes. Okay, cheers. <laughs> So what's your favorite riding saddle? <laughs> I, I'm kind of a, I like this one. <laughs> wow, free 
right. Want to saddle? Yeah, I want to saddle. Get on it. <laughs> Do you have that strawberry beer? The strawberry, we don't have a Vita strawberry. Uh, purple haze? All we have is a Vita Amber with, with the Vita. Can I have a look? Yeah. Uh, you excited about that clock? It's pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger the better, right? Yeah. For you. <laughs> For you. Hey, hey, hey. We're going to have to try that. The Northman. The Northman. Alright, we got the Northman to take on Randy the Rooster in New Orleans, the biggest car. I just want one go. You want one go? One go. A tough go. A one tough go, he yeah. said. He wants one tough go on the car. Alright. Alright, he wants one tough go on the biggest car in New Orleans. Show you the cock here, look at that. Ah. Challenge. Alright, it's you and me, buddy. Let's get it on. Don't get cocky now. Well, there was that one. He said one, one, one go. Hey yo, the Norman, give it up for the Norman, everybody. Sadly, I wasn't man enough for that big cop. It destroyed me. Look at him grinning over there. You gonna give it a go? No thanks. I don't know if they have any desodorant. Sorry, you guys have any desodorant? Desodorant? You don't know Desi Dadu? Yeah. Where are you from? You don't know Desi Dadu? They don't know Desi Daru. That's unbelievable. Indian whiskey. Oh, Desi Dadu. Desi Dadu. Oh, here's a man he knows. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they'd be like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. You don't drink Desi Dadu? No, we do. You do, yeah? Okay, me too. Old Monk is the best thing. Old done. Monk, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Old Monk is That's the best awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, Basically, that was a drink Guys, look at this.
Cool, such a home. Look at that. You notice nobody sleeps on my bench. How? Do you have respect? Do you command respect here yes, in the streets? I, I mark my territory. How? You don't want to know. It's the street code. You don't want to know. You see how the, every, every other one is taken? I see, I so see. empty? I know. That's right. How do you do that? I don't fuck around. That's how I do it. Man, he's from the streets. That's different than belongs on the street. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Noodles belongs to the streets. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's different. <laughs> how? Explain the, to the Northmen. From, from the street. <laughs> <laughs> Close the street. It's a different thing. <laughs> decided to end it with a fireball and probably the coolest bar we went to today uh, which was right here I'll give you the honor there we go hand grenade we're back we missed your fireball oh, okay. can we have two more I just actually missed her. So. <laughs> what are you listening to? I thought I heard sexy red. Do you want to do Jaeger? And uh, Fireball. Do you want to do one Jaeger and Fireball? Sure. Yes. Okay, we start, we start with a Fireball. And we end it with Jägermeister. That's that. Here's the thing guys, you know, I'm, you know, you've seen me film with noodles many many times now and sometimes we give each other a hard time but we're just, we're just, cre you know, bantering as we call it, or they call it in England. Noodles, you're my best friend, you're awesome. Uh, sometimes you can drink. Sometimes. And I appreciate you. And sometimes you can drink too. Cheers. Cheers. He didn't say appreciated me, did he? He left me hanging. Okay. Noodles is very famous. Yes? So am I going to be on some kind of... YouTube. Oh, uh, YouTube? You're going to ma get many customers coming here to drink what we're drinking. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Have you been on YouTube before? What you think? Yes. I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you've had many people come here to, to drink from the YouTube videos? Not really. Not really? Wow. I just want to see to say, I just want to say to the shameful people who have seen you on YouTube before and decided not to come here and have a Jägermeister and fireball shots, shame on you. My audience is not like that. They will come here to have fireball and Jägermeister and, and hang out. Okay, cool. We came back just for you. Well, thank you, Natalie. It's, it's the best bar we've been to tonight. It has the most character. You're the most fun. Really? Thank you. You joke around. Yeah, not that nice. You're lively. <laughs> <laughs> Noodles, keep we it PG. We're on YouTube. <laughs> we're on YouTube live? No, we're not live. Oh, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not really going to edit it because yeah. my audience likes to see Noodles unedited. <laughs> it's, it's quite entertaining and funny. So, do you want to okay. eat a too? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, just oh, us. You don't drink? Well, I drink, but not dark liquor. You go for the fireball, which is fireball no, is still dark. You want a vodka? Oh no, I'm a, I don't have vodka here. Okay, okay. I might hit the end 
Megan Machine later. Okay. <laughs> All right, and in that, okay. you know, be uh, man. The alcohol is getting to me. I think it's about time we sign up. It's been a blast here in New Orleans. We're gonna bye. bye bye. We are bye, signing, off signing off with Natalie. With uh, Natalie. Uh, so you guys, you know, put the other if channels you are, like, that are. Yes, put the other channels that have been into shame. You guys watch my channel, which obviously makes you cooler than people who watch other channels. Come here and drink with Natalie. Uh, let's finish this shot and sign off. Alright, Wow, they're showing up already. Ah. Welcome. <laughs> awesome, guys. Signing off. Bye, y'all.